Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be talking about body language across both genders and then we're going to go into something called motion creates emotion. So let's start with body language. Um, now the body language things I'm going to be saying here, these are applicable to a date, to an interview, social dynamics if you're out with your friends and these are things to kind of look out for. Not only in other people and how they're doing these body language things when they're behaving a certain way, but also things to look out with yourself because when you're doing these things um, naturally and subliminally you need to think why have I just done this why have I crossed my arms or why have I leaned forward why have I leaned back think to yourself why you've done that because uh, as much as listening to what I'm saying will help you understand it learn from yourself you're a human at the end of the day you have certain body language reactions that are primarily built into how you function therefore look at yourself and actually learn from that as well okay now Let's start at the top of the body and kind of work our way down. So let's start with the head, okay? So someone keeping their head up is a sign of confidence, okay? Um, it's quite a cliche one, but you know, head up, chest pumped out, a very masculine thing to do. Um, a head being too high, kind of above a level, is almost seen as a bit cocky and arrogant. Um, so you kind of want to keep your head at a level. It shows that you don't have fear. It shows that you're at equal playing field with everything that's around you. Um, kind of looking down is a naturally submissive sign. And um, it's something that dogs do. If you've ever seen dogs, they'll kind of look away and down. Children, if they're being shouted at, they'll look down. So this is to do with your head and your eyes. Keep your head up and keep your eyes level. Um, moving on to the eyes. As I just said, a submissive sign is to look down. If you ever catch someone looking at you and you and, and you stare at them, if they divert their eyes sideways, um, this is a sign that they weren't kind of checking you out and they were just looking at you, you know, people just look around sometimes. But if they look down, this is a submissive sign. It doesn't necessarily mean they were checking you out, but it means they feel guilty about what they've done. Because again, um, diverting your eyes down is a submissive sign. Dogs do it, uh, little kids do it when they're being shouted at. It's something that's primarily built into us, okay? Next is speech. So, talking slowly is a very, very underrated thing. And it's quite ironic for me to say because I'm quite well known for speaking very fast, okay? So let's try over the course of the video to follow my own advice. But speaking slowly is seen as a very confident trait. Now. If I sit upright in my chair, okay, let me fix my, fix my waistcoat a little bit. If I sit upright in my chair, okay, and my shoulders are back, we'll get onto shoulders in a second, and I speak to you very slowly, and I say that when you speak slowly, and you use your hands from time to time, what you're saying will portray much easier than if I was talking like this and leaning forward. So if I'm talking like this to you, this is a sign that I'm maybe slightly unstable about what I'm saying or insecure about what I'm saying because I'm speaking fast so um, in my brain I'm almost in a rush to try get out what it is that I'm saying in hopes that I won't get judged or feared but if I sit back maintain good eye contact good head level good posture and I speak slowly and from from time to time I use my hands this is how politicians speak to get people to trust them because they're untrustworthy. This is how presidents speak, and this is how motivational speakers converse and communicate, right? Because speaking slowly is a sign that you're not scared of being judged or fear, uh, 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 there's no fear of judgment about what it is that you're saying. Um, you're not in a rush to get it out, okay? You can take your time and you can speak. So that's another tip, okay? Next is your shoulders, okay? You wanna have your shoulders back, okay? A lot of people sit in a chair like this and it just makes me like, it makes me cringe a little bit. You wanna sit back in your chair, just relax, okay? Relax, sit back in your chair. Um, it's better for your posture as well, okay? You don't wanna be sit leaning forward in a chair like this. Sit back in your chair. It's good for your back, but it's also good for body language. It shows a sign of relaxation, okay? Someone who is leaning forward needs, okay, do you know what, let's do a little exercise quickly. I want you to close your eyes, okay? Pretend that you're sitting at a, uh, at a business table, okay? And you're about to have a meeting with a client and you really, really, really 
need to close this client on a sale. You really need to close this client on a sale because if you don't, you're unable to pay your rent and you're absolutely fucked, okay? Now, I want you to imagine that you're sitting there, you're sitting in this business chair um, and you're talking to the client and you're trying to get a sale through to them because you need to pay your rent and you need to put food on the table for your kids. Now, I want you to let your body behave in the way that you would be in that scenario, right? A lot of you will realize that you would lean forward, right? You would lean forward as you're talking to them because you need something from them. When you don't need something from someone, you will lean back. That's why a lot of a lot of good salespeople will lean back when they're speaking to a client, okay? Because when you lean forward, it shows neediness. It shows that you require something from them, okay? Leaning back with good posture shows you don't need anything from them. The, the thing is you might need something from them, right? But your body language is not emulating or emitting the vibe that you need something from them. Therefore, you're instilling more confidence in the person, okay? Uh, the next thing is a technique called mirroring, okay? Now, this is very good for a date because it builds a lot of um, sexual chemistry, but it's also good for a business meeting because you build a lot of rapport, okay? What I mean by mirroring is people... Okay, so the reason that the reason that some politicians or business people speak with their hands is back in back in back in the caveman days people would show their hands to show that they did not have a weapon that they come in peace therefore it's wired into our brains that communicating and showing our hands is a sign of trust between humans okay so if you notice that the person that you're talking to uses their hands a lot by you using your hands you are mirroring them and you're instilling confidence in them if someone is um if someone is using the word fantastic a lot in a conversation, don't say the word excellent, say the word fantastic. Mirror not only their body language, but mirror their terminology as well. Because you make people feel more comfortable if they can if they can recognize that you are emitting the same kind of terminology as them and body language as them. You will naturally feel in sync, okay? So mirror their body language, but don't mirror bad body language, okay? Uh so let's say you're at a business meeting and the person that you're sitting opposite is leaning forward like this. Uh, you don't need to mirror them in that case, but don't be too polarizing, okay? Um, okay, so if you're on a date with someone and you can see that they're quite shy and you know uh, maybe their shoulders are faced forward and they're kind of cr crunched forward this is a sign that they're trying to uh, almost hide turtle themselves um, you know taking up less space is a sign of low confidence taking up a lot of space is a sign of confidence like if I sit like this right if I sit in my chair like this all right and I put my fucking put my fucking feet on the table yeah if I sit like that I know I look like an absolute twat, okay? I know I look like an absolute twat, but do I not come across confident? You wouldn't see someone who's unconfident sitting like that, right? So if you notice that someone is on a date and they're kind of shriveled forward and you know, they're looking down a lot and the eye contact isn't there, um, what you, do, you don't have to mirror their body language in that sense, but you can try and make them feel more comfortable because you know, two people being like that is certainly not gonna be better. So you need to find a way around that and find a way to make them feel more comfortable. But um, terminology or any positive body language traits like using your hands or leaning back, these things are things that you should be trying to mirror in the person that you're on a date with or in a business meeting with, right? The last one is take up as much space as possible without looking like a twat, okay? So as I said earlier, okay, when I, before I drop my microphone, sit back, okay? Sit back, shoulders, take up as much of your chair as possible. Um, you know, don't put your feet on the table, that's a joke. Don't put your feet on the table, all right? Um, but sit, lean back, take up space, okay? Because again, taking up space is a sign of confidence. Go look up people like Conor McGregor. When Conor McGregor is in a press conference, this guy, yeah, this guy is like, he's He's like, he's like leaning back like this and he's talking. So I know that these, uh, a lot of these are uh, taking up a lot of space people can come across very arrogant and cocky. So find a balance, okay, find a balance. I'm just giving you extreme measures. There's people who are extremely introverted and shy who sit, who sit like this and you know, they, they kind of look down a lot. And then there's people like Conor McGregor who sit back in their chair and you know, their feet are up on the table and they're looking up all the time when they're talking. So find a balance between the two, okay? Um, and the last one that I wanna talk about very quickly, because I do have to go soon, is something called motion creates emotion, okay? 
Let me say that one more time. Motion creates emotion. So Tony Robbins talks about this, one of the best life coaches that have ever graced the planet, okay? And Tony Robbins says that if you're feeling anxious or you're feeling shy or you're feeling like, um, feeling like something may not go the way you want it to, maybe before an interview or before a date or, um, before a big family function or even before a social function and you just have that anxiety. Motion creates emotion. So what you need to do is emulate the high confidence body language traits we've spoken about in this video. Okay, so uh, what I mean by that is stand up um, and walk around your room on your own when people aren't around with your, with your face up and your chest out. Okay, or sit in a chair and put your feet up on the table. Again, do these things on your own. Okay, um, and, and naturally you will emit, you will emit higher vibrational frequency in your brain and you will naturally start to release chemicals that make you feel positive because, because right, your brain is wired to work with your body. So if your body is doing things that you would normally do uh, when you're happy, like smiling or laughing or having your head up or having your chest up, Doing these things will naturally make you feel happier because your brain for the past 20, 30, 15, however the fuck old you are, for that m amount of time, your brain has been trained, okay, to feel a certain way when this action is being done or when you feel that certain way, the action will be done. Therefore, you can reverse engineer that by, 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 by putting your body in these certain power stances or power poses, you are naturally going to release chemicals in your brain that make you feel a certain way. That's why in sales offices, they advise you to stand up when you're doing a pitch. Um, this is why uh, people, when they're t before they have a speech or a performance, they say take a deep breath and put it out because you're calming your body down, okay? And another really good one is just smile. Look in the mirror to yourself and just smile, okay? And walk around, have a power pose, put your feet up on the table, feel like a fucking boss, all right? Don't do these things around other people. Do this if you're feeling anxious and if you're feeling nervous, okay? Anyway, I got a shoot. Thank you guys. Stay tuned because we're gonna have daily and consistent content. Every single day, I'm gonna be throwing shit out. Thank you.